is uh, part two of our look at automation in logic in part one I showed you how to do some basic volume automation um, now I'm going to show you how to maybe tackle some different parameters now first of all I need to show our automation which if you remember we press A or the automation button and as you as you'll remember I put automation here a nice curved auto, bit of automation on our chords now let's try something different. Let's say I want to automate some pan information so that a sound seems to travel between the speakers. Let's maybe try it on the blip here. Now notice how every track says volume by default because that's the most common use of automation, but it doesn't have to. We can click here and we've got various other choices. In fact, I'll just zoom in on that. We've got pan. We've also got um, ES1, which is the synth that's making the blip sound, and loads and loads of different parameters, filters, LFOs, etc., which relate to the um, parameters on ES1. Those can all be automated. We've got an EQ on there. All of the parameters of the EQ can be automated, um, but we just want to do a plain old pan. So I'll select that, and you'll see it changes to pan there. It goes a different color, and the pan is at zero. Now let me just zoom out. I'm still on my automation curve tool from before so I'll select my normal pointer. Okay again if I move the pan which as you know is here on logic if I move that up and down it moves the line. So if I want to automate that I'll just draw it in again on a different lane. Let's maybe do a bit more of a zoom. Oop. So we'll make a node there. We'll start at zero will maybe move hard left over four bars and maybe hard right etc. Okay, Let's give you the idea. Let's see if we can hear that working. Over the left traveling back over to the right. Maybe move that back there. Okay, so uh, there we have some pan automation. Now let's say I want to then go and do some volume on that same blip sound there. Um, well, that's easy. We can just add another lane of automation by clicking on uh, this little triangle here. Now it tends to copy and duplicate whatever was above it, um, but we can select that to something different, in this case volume, and there's nothing stopping us fading that in so that now it does pan and volume at the same time. Okay. Now I don't actually want volume fade on there. So I'm going to select that particular lane there and I'm going to go to track, track automation and I'm going to delete the visible automation on selected track. Let's see what happens. And it just gets rid of the automation on the one that's highlighted, in this case the, the volume, leaving the pan safely there. If I'd have done the other one, the second one down, delete all automation on selected track, it would have done both, which we don't want. So I don't want any volume, so I can hide that by clicking that triangle again. And you can have as many lanes as you want of automation on a particular track. So that's another parameter. Uh, let's be a bit adventurous. Let's try and automate an effect, an effect send, actually. On our base here, I've got a send here which is going to a delay. So if I turn that up, you'll hear a delay on the bass. Now I don't want the delay on there all the time. I just want it to happen on one particular note here. So a very precise bit of automation. I want to automate that suddenly going up 
just for a split second and back down again. And I want it to happen around here, bar 15. Let's maybe zoom in a little bit on bar 15. Okay, let's maybe loop a section two. Let's select our automation lane. Instead of being volume, I want it to be, if we look up here, maybe another zoom's in order. If we look up here, we've got main, and that gives us some of the main sort of mixer related automation parameters. And there's one there, send one. And it even tells us that it's going to the delay um, auxiliary bus that I've set up. As you'll see, it's at zero at the moment. Okay. Now I can see, obviously, our notes here on the base. And I just want it to happen on that last note there. So let's do some nodes. The first node just after that preceding note. Let's maybe mm, zoom in a little bit more. Okay, there we go. Move into the middle. So the first node there, just after that note, I don't want it there, I want it here. Let's kick in another node just before the note, putting the send value up to, yeah, about zero, be fine. And then immediately putting it down again. This is a typical sort of dub a spot delay effect just on one particular note. So it's quickly just kicking in that send disk for one note and then going out again. The delay of course will carry on because I'm not automating the volume of the return, I'm automating the level of the send. Okay, and you'll hear what that sounds like in a minute. Zoom back out. Now what I want you to do is keep your eye on the send over here. Okay, so what you need to do is just keep your eye on this send here and have a listen to what kind of effect we get there. Okay, did you all hear that? Let's try it again. I might make that a little bit longer there because there's more decay on that note than I thought. Okay, let's try that again. then it's faded to nothing. Okay, that's all for part two.